All right, good morning. Welcome to another live session. My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. This is where we talk about entrepreneurs and thinking go rich success principles. We have had a lot of individuals that have shared with us so far on our channel. If you have missed any of our live sessions, you definitely want to go ahead and check out our IGTV. They will all be there. Meanwhile, we do this, you guys. If you have any questions, please go ahead and put in the comment section. Let me see if I can get Jason for us. If you're watching this on a replay, you definitely want to go back and forth. We are gonna, we are going to have a few other individuals that are going to share with us, and go ahead and let us know which country, which location, where you guys are tuning in. It's always interesting to see people from all over the globe. It's pretty cool. Let's see if we can find our next guest. There we go. Excited for this. There we go. Jason, good morning. Hey, what's going on? How are you? My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time out of your busy day and being with us. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Sure, sure. So, yeah, like you said, my name is Jason Salman. Uh, I'm from Tampa, Florida, the uh, beautiful Sunshine State. I don't know where you guys are tuning in from. Make sure you drop it in the comments below. Just kind of let me know where you guys are coming from as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I really work in the Bitcoin and blockchain space. Um, that's what I'm truly passionate about. Um, if I had to classify myself, I, you know, I've been in marketing and sales for years and years, but I really classify myself as a crypto evangelist. I just want to let other people know about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, why it's important, and I think how it could change the world. And I think Think and Grow Rich was kind of a big thing that kind of put me on the path to where I am now. So let's dive into it. When did you start with Think and Grow Rich? How did you start? Yes, yeah, so I, I think the first time I read Think and Grow Rich was my last year in college, like 2011. Um, uh, basically, a group, uh, a group of my friends had decided to start a mastermind. At that time, I had no idea. Like, I'd heard that word before, but didn't understand, like, the classification behind that. I had no idea it had anything to do with that book. Uh, but the funny thing was, that group, um, the point of that mastermind, at least originally, was to kind of read Think and Grow Rich and then kind of go through it like chapter by chapter. And so that was really my first experience um, reading the book. Uh, and it was one of those type of books that like, once I started reading it, um, I couldn't put it down. Um, it was very much just like things I hadn't heard that often, you know, not something you hear every day, you know, in your typical BS conversations you have with people about the weather and, you know, what was on American Idol or whatever TV people are watching. Um, so yeah, so that was my first experience was with this mastermind group. Uh, and then since then, I've read it, I think, three or four times after that as well. That is awesome. So what are some of the principles that you picked up right away? You're like, man, this is, this is crucial. I needed to know this. I need to implement this. Sure. So I think one of the bigger things, and for me, um, this is kind of how I, I live my life, but this book actually taught me part of this rule. So I want to kind of preface it before I go into like what I really got from the book. And so for me, I think no matter what you're reading, whether you're listening to a mentor or you're reading a book or a podcast or whatever it is, listen to all and follow none. You can take things that someone else says and apply them to your life without taking every principle that that person has or every principle that that book teaches. Take what you think you get value, take what you think applies to your life, take what you think can improve your life. And then if you don't like some of the other stuff, that's okay, you, you can move forward. So I wanna make sure I preface that first because um, there are even things in that book that I haven't necessarily applied to my life because I might think a different way, that's okay. So I always like to preface that uh, before I uh, talk about books especially. Um, but what I got out of it, first of all, you have to read this book. If you haven't read it, make sure you do. If you have read this book, put a little emoji down in the comments because this book will change your life. That is one thing I can uh, most certainly promise you. If you actually take the time and go through it, whether it's the book form or audio book, I've done both. Make sure you do that. Um, but really, I think one of the biggest things I took from it, like kind of right off the, the top, and this seems obvious, like when you first read it, but it's the mastery of self. Like that seems obvious, like of course you wanna be in control of yourself and you wanna you know, <laughs> take advantage of that aspect. You have to master yourself. So that's master your emotions. You know, Some people are all over their place with their emotions and in turn their life kind of reflects that. Um, and when, I, when they say like mastery of self, I mean that like broad spectrum. So you know, you're mastering your mind, you're mastering your, you know, your nutrition, you're mastering your spiritual life, you're mastering your relationships. It's the mastery of your whole self not just like one facet. Because you'll see some entrepreneurs out there, they're like absolutely killing it, they're making tons of money or whatever it is, but like the rest of their parts of their lives are completely falling apart. 
like so mastery of self is mastery over your whole self so that was i'd say that was like maybe the first like the biggest thing that i took out of thinking grow rich because that's kind of how it starts you know what i mean that's one of the biggest apart from like the backstory and the history sections that's kind of the way it starts is about that mastery of self jason my question is this when you say so is is your personal belief that individuals need a mentor and a coach uh yeah so i think at at minimum you need a group of mentors to be honest um so i don't think one mentor specifically i think you need a group of mentors so that's people you look to for different reasons so to give you an example of how i mentioned the mastery of self that's there's different facets to that so maybe you need a business mentor and then maybe you need someone to kind of help you more with your relationships or, or maybe more with some of your emotional side of things or whatever it is I think you need multiple mentors. So I think mentorship is extremely important, but sometimes I think people glob onto a mentor. So whether that's, you know, Tony Robbins or Grant Cardone or Gary Vaynerchuk or any of these types of giant mentors, but they take everything that that person is and, and try to reflect that in their own life. And I don't think that's actually how you should live. You're an individual, your own person. So you, you might, I think you should probably use multiple mentors. Okay. My next question goes to this is this. When do you know that the entrepreneur has mastered what they needed to learn from that coach and they need to move on. Because I see a lot of people are stagnating. They're listening to the same guru for five years, 10 years. And I'm like, either you have learned it from the guy, you know what he's talking about, or you did. not If you didn't, it's time to move on. If, if you did, fantastic. It's still time to move on. So how do you know when you need to get a new coach, new mentor, uh, you know, just go to the next level? Yeah, so for me, it's always about progress. So that's kind of how I live my life is I'm always trying to move forward. I'm trying to move to the next goal. I'm trying to push myself in some way. So if you're not progressing anymore, that's for one of two reasons. You're either not listening to the instructions, which means like you haven't even uh, followed the instructions that that mentor is giving you, or you've got it already and you need to move to a new level. That's really my, the two facets of how I decide, you know, whether or not uh, this relationship has maybe gone as far from a mentor mentee type of perspective is, am I progressing still? And if so or not, why? So that's how, kind of how I gauge it. That is awesome. So what, are, what is one more other principle that you're utilizing today in your business? Because then sure. I want to so, go into Bitcoin and I want to go into blockchain. I want everybody to know the basics because I know so many people, you know, my mom doesn't know what the heck Bitcoin is, man. Like, <laughs> they don't know. The older generation is like, you know, the sure. only reason she's got a touch screen phone is because rotary is not available anymore. So it's <laughs> like... One of those things that, you know, they go, she barely got on Facebook. So when I got a notification, my mom wants to, like, you know, be my friend. I panicked. I thought someone stole her identity. <laughs> so I had to call her and say, listen, was it you? She's like, yeah, what happened? I'm like, you sent me a friend request. She's like, oh, that's what that was? Do you want to be my friend? I'm like, oh, you look two block away from me. You don't need to be my friend. We could you call me, right? That's it's funny. my favorite. That's funny. I like I'm afraid to teach you stuff, man. Yeah, you can man. Photos and pictures of family, and she doesn't know. She'll just be posting it, man. So it's dangerous weapon in someone's hand. They don't know how to utilize it. Sure, and, and I think that's true of a lot of specialized knowledge. Is in the wrong people's hands, it's very, very dangerous. So I think it kind of depends. But kind of going back to your original question before we get into some of the the Bitcoin and crypto and blockchain stuff, is another thing that I that I got out of the book. And so before I say this part, I want to preface this as well as. Uh, a lot of people who read Think and Grow Rich are really into the law of attraction, let's say. We hear, you know, people talk about that all the time, about the secret. I have a little bit different perspective on this that I want to make sure I share because this is something I actually ended up with after reading Think and Grow Rich a few times. And so what I call it is the law of focused action. So I actually don't believe in the law of attraction from what I call like a meta perspective. So I'm not like, okay, I want to create the next iphone right and so i'm like oh i think about the iphone and all i'm going to do is think about this new iphone that i'm going to create it's going to be better than the iphone and all i do is think about it every day that does nothing that does nothing for you so like i can put it on a board i can i can put it as my screensaver i can do all these amazing um things to like keep it on my mind but unless i'm taking focus daily action it's completely irrelevant it means nothing so for me what i live by is what i call the law of focused action which is a ton of daily actions to accomplish whatever your goal is. You're writing a book, you want to do a play, you want to be a YouTube star, you want to you know, change the world, whatever that is, you have to take massive daily action to accomplish that. And so I think focus daily action is a massive thing. So I kind of wanted to preface that before I get into it because I think people can get very lost in like the meta side of the law of attraction. And then in turn, they're like, I've been wishing to win the lottery for 20 years and it's not working. Like, well, how many lottery tickets did you buy? 
Well, that's not what it said. It didn't say I had to buy one. Like, you know, so <laughs> it's kind of funny perspectively. Um, but really, the, no, listen, the, listen, the, listen, to me, if, if, if I personally had today to summarize the entire book or, or any self-development book, I would come up with one word, and that would be action. I don't care how positive you are. I don't care how motivated you are. I don't give a shit what language you speak, where you come from, what country, what planet, what industry, what business, what technology. It don't matter. I, you could be the slowest, lowest IQ person in the room. As long as you're taking actions on daily basis, you will eventually get there. The other parts, the other principles make you get there faster. But if you're not taking action... I mean, I got a vision board over here, you know, but a you vision board without action is not going to do anything. Like, I could be looking at it all day long. It looks pretty. I know I made it. Yep. I stick to those nice things over there, right? He's got a plane. He's got a bigger Rolex. He's got this. He's got that. He's got yep. a lot of motivational stuff. But to me, it's just, okay, that's the first step. But the real step is going to work. For There's sure. no substitute for hard work. You for can't. Sure. It just doesn't work. Yeah, and actually, uh, you know, so in the book, you know, what tells you to write down your goal, and you're kind of writing down that little that little kind of note card section, and then you're going to repeat that, you know, to yourself every day. That's not for that once again that meta like law of attraction purpose. That's to me is that's the focus aspect of it, it's because you're keeping in your mind what you're going to focus on, so that all the actions you take during the day are on that focus. So you want to make a million dollars by the end of 2020. You're focusing on that so that you do take those daily actions. It's a daily reminder, like. No, I don't need to watch this Netflix show right now because I need to take this action to get to whatever that goal is. So for me, any of that law of attraction aspect type of things and trying to trying to put that stuff in your head is surely for the fact of keeping me on target all the time. I think it's very valuable, but like you said, it's, it, it has no value without the action. No, no, definitely. It's part of the equation, but the biggest factor in it is daily action or hourly action or you know weekly action whatever you want to call it if you don't go to work nothing is going to happen simple done and and here is the other part that i want to mention before we go into that cryptocurrency is that sometimes your actions might be wrong sometimes your actions might get you actual to failures and temporary setbacks but that is part of the equation you are sure. taking action that is a process of elimination you eliminated these things that you know that they don't work for you to get to your goal, but you need to eliminate it. That's why, you know, I was talking to, I was, I was having a conversation with a, with a, with a physician, with a doctor, and this individual works with, for the pharmaceutical company. And obviously, you know, I'm in financial services, so he didn't really think that I knew what's going on, but my major was biomed. So I said, do you know why every medicine or every type of a pill that any pharmaceutical company creates costs almost a billion dollars on yep. average for new medicine to hit the market. And he goes, well, I know why I did this. I said, let me tell you why. Because when I read Think and Go Rich, I realized that that billion dollars goes also the cost of the ones that didn't make it. So for the sure. one that makes it pays for the ones that didn't make it. And he was just like, you read that from what book? I said, let me tell you, as a physician, you should rethink and grow rich. Because if you rethink and grow rich, a lot of our health conditions, probably a lot of our mental problems, sickness, you know, will go away if you just focus on this and focus on your goals, because then you don't have time to be sick. You don't have time to be part, about that. That's also part of the mastery of self. You have to think of that. If you're actually mastering yourself, so you're mastering the way that you're, you know, the mind works, you're mastering what you put in your own body, a lot of those problems will go away. You know what I mean? It's, it's a part of that master yourself. But I think you touched on something else, which is really important, which is the elimination, right? So like you have your goal and it's up here and you're really focused on it, but like putting in that daily action, like you're going to fail, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to miss your, your, your quota or whatever this stuff. None of that stuff matters as long as you're still moving towards that goal. I think so many people like think of their goal as like this very like pie in the sky. It's so far away. Like I can barely see it. When like you need to think of it as like the end of a staircase, you have to take that next step, that, that piece of action. Oh yeah, you might stumble, but you're still on the staircase. Take the next step and move up again. Take the next step and move up again. So I think if you focus on that daily action, those daily steps, that will take you to that goal. No matter how many times you fail, you're eventually gonna get up the staircase. Got it. Uh, Jason, let's dive into to your specialized knowledge. If you had to explain Bitcoin 
in one minute to my mom that she has no clue what the heck Bitcoin is, what would be your one minute pitch? So I can make it uh, three seconds. It's cash for the internet. Simplest way you can, you can possibly describe that. So give That's me the it. long version now. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so essentially, it, it's, uh, to give you the little bit longer version, it's peer-to-peer -peer decentralized digital money. That's what Bitcoin really is. Um, to give you the, the shortest historical background ever, um, it was created in 2008 and launched in 2009. It's created by an anonymous person or persons. No one knows. Um, the creator's name is Satoshi Nakamoto. Once again, creators, it could be a group. Um, but essentially, he wanted, to, he wanted to solve a few problems, let's say, in our, in our current financial system. Right? So first of all, there are tons of, tons of companies out there have spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to solve what's called the double spend problem, which is if you're not using a centralized third party like Visa or MasterCard, or American Express or PayPal or Venmo or any of these people, where you give them your, your money or your credit card information, the money, the transaction actually goes through them and then they hand your money to another person. Now, the issue is like when you're using digital money, you could technically spend it twice. So then you deal with all these fraud and chargebacks and all the crazy things that kind of currently exist in the current financial system. And so he figured out a way using math. That's uh, when you hear the word cryptocurrency you're using cryptography. Essentially, it's a, a way of securing a transaction. Um, but he, he figured out a way to do this. And he launched this open source. Anyone could contribute to this, uh, to this project on this tiny little newsletter that was essentially for like, um, they were called cypherpunks, but essentially it's for, um, it for like geeks at that time. And so it just started as this tiny thing, but it was this idea that, you don't need these third parties for trust. You don't need these very centralized parties that make large mistakes. You hear about all the hacks and information, all those things that go on every single year. You don't actually need those third parties if you can solve it using math. And so he actually figured out a way to do that. And so now, you know, you went from Bitcoin essentially having no value to being worth, you know, something like $9,500 today or something like that. Um, and people transact billions of dollars worth of value on the internet today without using any third parties. You don't need anyone's permission no one can tell you you can't do it. Um, you're in control of your own money, which if you think about, you know, us living in the 21st century, like sending money should be as easy as sending an email, but it's not. It's not that easy. Without these trusted third parties, it's a, a, a completely arduous process. Um, if you look at like what it takes to send a wire to China, it's almost faster to send an anvil to China. Uh, it takes like seven business days. It costs an absurd amount of money where you could send Bitcoin the whole transaction will confirm in less than 10 minutes, you could send a hundred million dollars. So that's, a, that's the really quick, fast, giving you everything I can uh, break down. That is awesome, that is awesome. But what I wanna do is, what I think we should do is we should probably set up a time where we do another live, where we go through it, because there's a lot of things that are happening in, in crypto. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs wanna get on it, but I don't think they have all the information and I think there's a lot of information that's on YouTube or social media, all that, but it's not coming from a reputable source. Sure. So everybody questions it, but I'd rather learn from someone who's doing it on a daily basis. So you could tell me this is what's happening. This is how I see it. In my opinion, this is the trend that's what's for going sure. on. So I like that much better than me watching video from five years ago. For sure, I'm ready to do it. Let's schedule a time and we'll, uh, we'll knock it out. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jason, for taking this time and being with us. Hopefully, we'll collaborate a little bit more. Of course. Thanks, everyone, for having me on. Appreciate it. You got it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah.